In this video, I'm going to show you nine hidden symptoms of trauma and talk about why they need to be validated and addressed and taken as seriously as the classic symptoms of trauma. My name's Keelene and I successfully healed my over 17 years of CPTSD using a brand new method I created called the Broken to Unbreakable Method. Since I healed, I've taught that method to people all around the world and they've been able to completely heal too. As you may be able to guess, there are many different hidden symptoms of trauma because trauma affects so many different areas in our life. But I wanna go through nine that are easily overlooked but also incredibly damaging. So these deserve your attention, they deserve validation, and what's cool is when you heal from your trauma, all of these other problems go away as well. So you might be having problems in your life that you're not sure if it's related to trauma or not, but what you'll find out is it's because of trauma, it's related to trauma, and when you focus on healing your trauma, all these things go away as well. So the first thing is low self-esteem slash self-confidence. Now, this is really going to be damaging. Again, it's not one of the classic symptoms of nightmares, flashbacks, anxiety. Your self-esteem is going to affect not only, of course, the way you feel about yourself, but the decisions that you make in your life. If you don't feel confident in yourself, right? If you have low self-esteem, you're not gonna go for opportunities that are presented to you. You might not be fully invested in relationships. You might feel like you're not good enough. So it's a really important important symptom to make sure that we're giving our attention. The second one I want to talk about is self-destructive behaviors. Now this kind of goes without saying. Now it's really important to put our attention on this because what we might not realize that we're doing is actually causing damage to ourselves without wanting to but this damage is coming from trauma. So we might put ourselves into situations that are dangerous or traumatic. We might do certain things in our life that cause us long-term pain, right? So it might be we overeat, we don't exercise. All of these things are self-destructive behaviors or we seek out toxic relationships or we seek out uh, drama or even more trauma. This comes from trauma. So again, when we put the attention back on healing the trauma, this is something that goes away. The third hidden symptom that I wanna talk about is going to be toxic relationships. Now, this is something that can just happen, but it's also something that we can actively seek out because of trauma. Now, just in general, a traumatized person is going to have strained and very often toxic relationships. And that's because of what we bring to the table. And it's also because of what we seek from other people. So typically we have an unhealthy view of what a relationship should look like, making the relationships that we have damaged or damaging even though we don't mean to do that. So we might communicate in unhealthy ways. We might show love in unhealthy ways, right? So all this is gonna come back to trauma and those toxic relationships. Your relationships will get healthy when you heal from your core trauma or traumas. The fourth hidden symptom I wanna talk about is something we call uncontrolled emotions. Now, this actually goes both ways. Typically, when people think about uncontrolled emotions, they think about negativity, right? Like negative emotions, right? So you're lashing out at somebody or you're yelling at them or you're raising your voice or whatever it is, right? They think about negative emotions. Here, also, we wanna think about positive emotions, right? And so what we'll typically have with someone who's experienced trauma or traumas is we have this, this big spectrum of emotions that we swing on back and forth and back and forth, and all of it is uncontrolled, right? So that's a hidden symptom there. It might be, you know, we, we're really, really happy or really, really attached, right? Really, really like fully, fully in love, right? Because that emotion is uncontrolled. And so what you find when you heal from trauma is you're able to control those emotions and they're more appropriate for the situations that you find yourself in. The fifth one I wanna talk about is lack of focus. Now this comes out in many, many ways. Actually what we find very, very common with people who have experienced trauma or traumas is also having ADHD, right? And so you might have a lack of focus in your day-to-day -day life. You might find it in your job. You might find it in your studies and you might find that it is just hard for you to do a certain task. 
or focus on a certain task, especially if it's something that you don't want to do. What you might also find is the other end of the spectrum, and you'll notice that's a theme here, of extreme focus, where you're fully obsessing over something and you find that sometimes hours go by and you're just totally obsessed in that thing. So there's two ends of the spectrum there, but lack of focus is a huge, huge cause uh, or, or rather effect of being traumatized so having one or more traumas and again once you heal those traumas you're able to focus you're able to think more clearly and you're able to do the things that you want to do regardless of if you love them or not now the sixth one here is probably the only one that is not going to be completely and fully solved just like that by healing the core of your trauma or traumas this one still requires uh, work after the fact, right? And so this is addictions. Now, this could look like anything, right? It could be television, it could be social media, it could be pornography, it could be drugs, it could be drinking, it could be spending, it can be any or all of those things. Okay, addictions, the root is going to be pain, quite literally in the addiction cycle, but also just in general, right? If there's pain, it's a natural response. Listen to this, are you hearing this? It's a natural response for your brain and your body to want to run and numb from that thing. Okay, and typically what happens with addictions is we're seeking a certain thing and we're doing it in a misguided way, right? Your brain is trying to protect you. It's trying to shut it down. It's trying to numb you from whatever it is that's going on in your head or in the environment. So there's a reason that we do that, right? You're hearing that, that's really powerful. So it's not your fault, right? And this is going to be, again, like the exception to the rule of all of these things are going to go away when you heal your core trauma or traumas except for this, this is typically gonna require a bit more legwork on the back end, but it's going to make it a ton easier after you heal the core trauma or traumas. Now, the next one I wanna talk about here, number seven, is one that's very, very easily overlooked, but you will see a lot in the field, right? And so that is financial difficulties, okay? And so this happens because of a few different reasons. And uh, you could see, I just got like excited about it, right? Because all of these things you see are interconnected, right? So if you have low self-esteem and you're not making the right choices for you, or if you're self-destructing in your behavior, so instead of saving long-term to, to reach your savings goals, you're spending irresponsibly, that's a destructive behavior, right? If you have, uh, let me shut this off. If you have toxic relationships, right, and the, the finances are, are coming into play there, that's something as well, right? The addictions, your finances could be directly related to your addictions, right? So if you're spending a lot of money on alcohol or, or if you have a food addiction, right? Same thing, lack of focus, right? Lack of long-term vision, uncontrolled emotions, right? So we're feeling these these very, very intense emotions and then maybe we're, we're spending where we don't want to, we're making impulse purchases or again, it could be addiction, so maybe it's cigarettes or drugs or alcohol or whatever it is, right? Or it's streaming services. And so this is really, really common. And again, the theme here, when you focus on healing the trauma or traumas more, more appropriately, it's almost always traumas, right? Because we have big T trauma, little T trauma, and we call them medium T trauma. But when we heal those things, all of these go away because we're able to focus. We have high self-esteem, so we have uh, confidence. We don't self-destruct. We don't have toxic relationships, right? We have healthy relationships. We are in control of our emotions. So those financial difficulties go away as well because we're able to work, we're able to hold a job, we're able to think long-term, we're able to be steady and stable and at peace with our current life and the goals that we wanna achieve. Now, number eight here goes along with that one we just talked about, and it's short-term. It actually goes along with everything. Decision making. So when we make short term decisions, what we're saying is I want this now at the expense of my future. Are you hearing that? I want this now at the expense of my future. I want to use now, whatever that addiction is, at the expense of the way that I feel about myself after the fact, right? I want to self-destruct now at the expense of what it does to my relationships, right? I'm not going to focus now at the expense of not being able to hold the job, right? So all of these come into play. We make short-term decisions. And again, what I really want you to take away is none of this is your fault. 
Okay, you're hearing that? None of this is your fault. These are hidden symptoms of trauma, right? And so, you know, again, the obvious ones, anxiety, depression, they're very easy for society to validate. They're very easy for us to validate. But I want you to sit down, and after we go through number nine as well, which is a really powerful one, I want you to sit down and kind of look at this list and, and validate all these things. It's not your fault that you have low self-esteem. It's not your, your fault that you self-destruct. It's not the, your fault that you have toxic relationships or addictions or you can't focus or you have uncontrolled emotions or you have your financial difficulties or you make short-term decisions right? Your, your brain is wired to protect you and it's trying, and that's really important. It's trying. It's just not doing it in a way that's going to help us kind of get out of the hole that we're in. So when we focus on setting our brain up for success by showing it how to heal from our past traumas, then all of these things go away, right? So my big saying is it's not your fault. None of this is your fault. It is, however, your responsibility to heal that trauma or traumas so that you can live the life that you deserve to live. Possibly my favorite one is this one, number nine, because it is so overlooked, it is so invalidated, and it is so frustrating from the standpoint of having this behavior and being uh, in, in the depths of trauma and having no idea what this is. So the last one here I call behavior, uh, uncertainty. Okay. So behavior uncertainty. Another way I'll put this is confusion. Okay. And so this is what happens when you're trying now, listen to this. You're, you're really trying to do the right thing. You're trying to have healthy relationships. You're trying to heal from your addictions. You're trying to control your emotions. You're trying to communicate. You're trying to do things that are good for you, right? You're, you're really trying but you're not sure if you're doing the right thing or if you're not sure if your feelings are appropriate. Not all feelings, not all emotions are bad. And in fact, emotions are, are the doorway to showing us what needs to be worked on, right? But emotions are, are part of life. They're a good thing. And so what can happen with trauma is we have so much negative emotion, so much emotion just in general, what we can often do is kind of set this goal of like, I don't want to feel any of this anymore which is this goal of like no emotion. And, and that's not what being human is about. That's not what life is about. That's also not healthy, right? And so we can be very, very confused of, well, is this emotion appropriate? Is this reaction appropriate, right? This, somebody just hurt me and I'm reacting. Is this a trauma reaction? Is this a normal reaction? Is this guilt that I'm feeling appropriate? Now, guilt, shame, anger, regret, those can be feelings that are actually good. Now, they don't feel good, but they can be good because they're, they're going to tell us and show us barring trauma. So if we're not traumatized, they're going to tell us and show us what behavior you know, we want and we don't want in our lives, what behavior we will and won't accept in our lives. They're going to help us with setting boundaries. Are you hearing this? However, with trauma, the guilt, shame, regret, anger, all of these behaviors and, and, and emotions that we feel, right? We're not sure, is this from trauma and it's like a way overreaction, excuse the term, or is this completely appropriate to feel this way, right? So again, behavior uncertainty. So I'm, I'm trying to do this thing, I'm going to do this thing, I'm going to communicate this way, or I'm, I'm going to show my love this way, but I don't know if it's right. Or I'm trying to take care of myself this way, I'm going to, to, to do this self-care, but I don't know if it's right. I mean, should I apologize? Should I not apologize, right? So all of that is behavior uncertainty, one of the most overlooked, but most important things when it comes to trauma and trauma symptoms. Again, the entire board here, when you heal from your traumas, all of this goes away. You get that clarity in your behaviors. You know with certainty, this is a good boundary. This isn't. This is acceptable. This isn't. This is the time to apologize. This isn't. You know all those things. So again, on top of all of the classic symptoms of trauma, anxiety, nightmares, depression, sleep problems, isolation, intrusive thoughts, these hidden symptoms can quite literally ruin your life, which is why it's imperative that you have a plan to heal from your core trauma or traumas. You need a plan in place in order to get to that full healing. So all of the classic symptoms, anxiety, depression, nightmares, flashbacks, all of those go away, as well as everything here goes away as well. And that is going to give you an unbelievable sense of freedom. Now, if you don't have a plan in place to heal from your PTSD, CPTSD, or history of trauma, 
you can join me and coach with me free for 14 days in my Recovery Secrets Healing Membership, where I walk you step by step how to go from rock bottom if you're there or wherever you're starting at to completely and fully healed so you can eliminate all of your symptoms permanently. So if you wanna join myself and the thousands of people who have fully healed from their trauma, click the link below this video so you can start your free trial, so you can join us in our community and so that you can get on the path to healing. And of course, don't forget to like this video, subscribe for new videos on healing and trauma every single week, and leave me a comment to let me know what you liked and what you wanna see in future videos.